Hey YouTube, Andy47-57 through 57 here. What I got today is my 1148 built in 1949 and I had a viewer request to see me uh, take apart this thing and show them how I got my 10 round capacity. So I'm going to do that now. So what I did here was buy a Remington Plus 5, this is actually Remington brand by the way, a Remington Plus 5 12 gauge tube extender. Now I can't put the barrel clamp on it because I mean... This thing is a re recoiling barrel. It's a full recoil recoil system. So what I did when I put this thing on it, I realized I had a uh, 5 16 gap in between it. So what I did was take a chunk of leather and I machined myself a 1 inch washer. Because apparently they don't make any washers in that size. So I sat there with my drill press and all that crap. And built myself a spacer on it. The reason why I got the leather on it is to keep this thing from coming undone. But let's take this thing apart. Now I'm going to hate this part myself because it's a pain in the ass to put back together. Here we go. Taking off the tube now. Just to show the viewers. Now if I'm not careful, I'm going to get the spring to shoot out. And I'm doing this one handed because my cameraman is not here today. So we're about to see a spring go zoing. If I'm not yep, there it goes. It went zoing. So let's pull off the spring. Okay, so here's my uh, washer here. Now I made this thing with a Dremel because my uh, pocket knife is not sharp enough. Let's pull the barrel off. Let me put it on my camera. Now my thing's threaded on here because I didn't want my washer to come off. So it's going to take me a few moments to get it off. There it goes. Just got it off. Okay, so there's my leather washer. There's my steel washer that I made myself. I machined it. And it sits right on top of here if I can find the barrel. Sorry, the light's crap. But there's my barrel. There's the thing on it. I still have all my factory parts. This thing did not modify my gun in any way. But here, let me put the tube on. Sorry, I had to put down the camera again. I'll show you the gap that I get and what happens if you leave that gap on it. Now keep in mind this gun was developed in 1948. Mine's in 1949 according to the barrel date. Meaning that this thing's kind of hard and rare to find. Let me get this thing down on it. Now this thing will hold 9 to 10 rounds on it depending on the length of my 2 or 3 quarter inch shells because they're not all the same. I need paper ones. Okay, so here it is. Now you can tell there's a major gap back here. And that's bad on the stock because you leave that gap there. The recoiling system won't allow the gun to operate all the way. See, it's going way out of battery. And I need that. That needs to be back here. Shouldn't wobble a bit. Now the problem is, is that Remington did this back when they were using the, 11, the Model 11 frame. So this is basically a uh, streamlined Model 11. And so I got a 5 16th inch gap here, and what I did was take a quarter inch washer and an eighth inch piece of leather. And by the way, that is cow leather, not any other kind that I used. And so what I happened was that basically I made a uh, 3 8 inch thick piece, and 5 16th is about 1 16th less than 3 8 So I did that. Let me lock this bolt back. Let me get this thing back together now. I'm gonna have to put the camera down to get this thing off. No, I don't. I, I don't know. But yeah, I got my recoiling system right here, so I'm gonna have to hold the put down the camera. Sorry, folks. Okay, so I put down my camera, made it flip around. Now this comes the tricky part. Now since my washer is not square because I'm not the best machinist in the world right now, I gotta make sure the thin part's up on the top. By the way, you do got to make this thing thin because you do have a very small gap in between the barrel and the uh, tube. And you want this barrel to be able to recoil. It has to be able to recoil. Damn it. Because if the barrel can't recoil, you're not ejecting your cartridges in semi auto It basically becomes a, uh, a very hard to operate pump action. Well, spring loaded pump action. How about that? That works. Let's get this uh, other washer on. 
The reason why I chose leather over paper or anything else is because if I decide to fire this thing a lot, it gets pretty hot and leather has a very high burning temp compared to paper and rubber melts easily and I didn't want something that was going to rot. Now they did a long time ago back in the 1860s make gun parts out of leather to make gaskets on some of the very old uh, bald action bald action black powder rifles. Here comes a very fun part for me in this spring back inside the receiver and get it to actually go down all the way which is going to be a pain in the ass in my book so basically we're putting on the length of two barrel springs let's see if I can do this on my first try without the spring going zoing by the way this thing will hit you in the face so make sure you're looking away when you're doing this compress it on the top oh oh oh, oh I think I got it I got it, man. Oh, man. I got lucky today. Sorry, my camera dropped. I lost power on it. So, here we go again. Just finally got the tube down. See, no play in this action. Can't move it back and forth. And it will function now. Now, since it's old, 1148, since the chamber is actually exactly two and three quarters, and not all shells are exactly two and three quarters, even inside the same box, You'll get one that's like a 16th or a 32nd longer. It will get stuck in the case. So what I recommend is going old school and just buying the paper cases like this thing was actually designed to shoot. Have a good day. That's how I did my build.